Hey guys, welcome to day 20. And today we're going to be talking about a lot of big concepts. And so because it's day 20, I know I said I was going to be making these bonus videos. And this is kind of going to be that bonus video where you don't have to like know anything beforehand from the series to learn this. But we're kind of going to be doing a little bit of catch up because there's some things I didn't tell you about so that we could get to the code much quicker. And so first we're going to be talking about pointers. And so Java technically doesn't have pointers because you know the background system takes care of it but we can still look at these concepts and how they work in code so let's open NetBeans here and we can just type it in like that it'll pop open so what are pointers well they are variables that store the address of another variable in memory and so in other words they point literally to memory locations so let's take this into the real world pretend you have this PO box do you know it's where your mail goes and it's a number 295, 295. And you know you can get to this mailbox, you know you walk to all the PO boxes and there they are, there's your 295. And say it's at the location 55, 55 with like longitude and latitude and stuff. And so this remembered location, the fact that you know, oh, it's at 55, 55, you know, want, you know, you know it's at that location, that's like a pointer, the fact you remember it. But you can't necessarily get your mail until you know you walk over to that location. Taking this back to code, the value of a pointer is the location of another value stored somewhere in memory. So it's like the longitude latitude. In order to get the actual value that's stored in memory, i.e. like the amount of mail you have, we have to do something called dereferencing the pointer. Luckily, Java, again, does all of this work for us, so we don't have to worry about it code wise But in other languages, it's extremely important because you have to do this yourself. There's no system doing it for you. So basically, the location of your mailbox the fact you know where it is is like a pointer it's like the address of where your mailbox is but you can't access the data inside of it you know what mail you have unless you literally walk towards it and that's like the idea of this whole pointer thing making this more cody say you have a reference data structure like an array the array has a pointer that holds the address of where the array is stored like in memory but it's not going to have like the whole array right there because don't it's easier to like say, okay, this is where it is, let me go fetch that, versus having everything right there in front of you because it takes up a lot of space and it takes a lot of time to like iterate through it. And there are a bunch of other reasons that I won't go into now, but it's, for an array, like you're gonna have this pointer and then you have to actually walk to the location of where it is stored in memory to access its data, just like we have to do with the mailbox. Now the difference between reference and primitive types might make more sense now. A reference data type, which is like a class, dictionary, queue, linked list, you know, stack, or any other data structure, has a pointer to a memory location. And so basically, like for a stack, we're gonna have an address of where the stack is, and then we go and fetch it once we wanna like access its data. However, a primitive data type, like an int, a bool, you know, a character, these do not have pointers, and so that's why they're primitive. They don't have an address that says where they are in memory. They're just right there in that slot. There's no pointer. Like saying, oh, go fetch it. It's just right there. Now let's get to the code. The first thing we're going to do is create a person class. And so to do this, of course, we go to our new project. We're going to create a person, but first we have to select Java, Java application. And then we are going to say person, you know, we're making a person in a person class. I put it on my desktop here. It's going to keep loading, create this new project. And I know I've just been talking about pointers and like person is now going to have a pointer. When you create a new instance of person, like person stored in memory, it'll have a pointer. And then whenever we want to do something with our person, it will go and find that address and then go and fetch our person with inside the data. So the first thing that we're going to do is give our person a hair color. And so we are just going to call this a string at first and call it hair color. There we go. And it's great. But there might be a problem here. Yes, our hair color is a string, but there are only certain colors your hair can be. Like your hair can't be AA or it can't be, you know, bubbles. Like it has to be a color. So basically if I had a setter, I could just, you know, set this to whatever I wanted, even though that's not a color. How can we make it so that it can only be a certain, like hair color can only be blonde, red, black, you know, whatever, pink, 
blue, purple, how can we make it so it's only valid colors? Well, we have to use a new data type. Yes, so we're introducing new data types, even this late in the series, and it's called an enum. An enum is a special data type that basically allows for a variable to be one of a set of predefined constants. And so those predefined constants may be black, blue, purple, rainbow, all of those, and la the hair color, if you are saying this is gonna be a hair color you know, instance, it has to be one of those values, it can't be anything else. And so we are gonna do this in the code, we are gonna go to our person little thing here, do control click, control click like that, we're gonna do new. I have Java enum here, but yours probably won't be there, so you'll go to other, and this will load, and there's a bunch of things, you're gonna go to Java, and enum should be right here or somewhere in here. So you'll click that and it'll be great. And you're gonna call this enum hair color because you know that's what the enum is. We have this great little thing here and inside of here we're literally just gonna list the values we want hair color to be. And so to do this we are going to write blonde, brown, black, red, Orange, these are just all the hair colors that we could possibly choose. Pink, blue, green, purple, rainbow, and then maybe we have a catch-all, which is like other. So if it doesn't, you know, if the one that you want doesn't fit all of these, it's gonna be, it's an other hair color. But again, maybe you don't have that, your preference. And so now that we have this enum hair color, we can go back to our person and make this hair color a hair color. And if we try to make it like just equal A or something, it's gonna error because it's not one of the enums here. What if I just do a string and I say, you know, A, it's still gonna error because it's not a hair color. So how do we get blonde? Like if we just put blonde here, it's still gonna error because we have wrapped it in a string. So actually it's very simple. We just do blonde here, boom. It's still gonna give an error because we have to add this import for the enum. So now we have the blonde, you know, import, but say we want to start with black hair, that's like our default, well we're going to have another error and we got to import this. Now this is a good case when we talked about imports a couple videos ago, a couple days ago, we did something where we did dot star. And usually we didn't do this because it can sometimes take up a lot of memory and you, you import stuff that you don't use and like what's the point of that? This is a good example where you would use it. Here our enum is so small, like it's literally like less than 10, I hope it's less than 10 or else, yeah, counting. Um, but yeah, if this is like super small, like enums are super small, this would be a good time to like do that versus having like a messy import for every single color that we have here. So we're gonna go with black hair for now, and then we are actually gonna create a person class, little constructor here, and we're gonna make this a public constructor. It's gonna return a person, and there we go. And you might be wondering why our black hair is in caps and why all of our things are in caps, and it's because they're constants. Like, you're never gonna be able to change the name of blonde unless you change it literally right here, and it's still, it's gonna be constant. It's never gonna change inside of our system for any reason unless we physically go into the enum class and change it. So, so far we've talked about pointers, you know, those things that hold the address or location of something in memory, and enums, which allow a value to be set to one of like a set of predetermined things. And now we're gonna be talking about aliases. This is, this video is kind of like a hodgepodge of topics, hence why it's in the, you know, the video of bonus things. And so, yeah, now we're talking about aliases. <laughs> so what are aliases? Well, think about it in real life, you know, Peter Parker. He's a guy. He has, his alias is Spider-Man. Lady Gaga is an alias. You have Lady Gaga and then her real name, which I don't know. So we are actually gonna create this type of aliasing inside of our code. So what does aliasing actually mean? Well, it means like if we have Peter Parker, if we change his hair to pink, then Spider-Man's hair should be pink because they're the same person. It's acts, it's the same name for the same thing. So let's just, let's write code because that's what we do here on 30 Days of Code. And we are gonna create two new people. And so to do this, we will type in person. And our first person is going to be Peter. And we'll do Peter Parker. And he's just gonna be a new person. He's gonna have black hair. And then we'll have person and Spider-Man. And so we are actually gonna make Spider-Man equal Peter Parker because 
Spider-Man is Peter Parker. They're the same, the same person, so we're going to set up those pointers, but we still maybe want to access them by different names because they are, in fact, aliases. Now, if I do a little print statement here, sister da 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 da, and we go hair color of Peter Parker, and then we do Peter Parker, Peter Parker dot hair color, and we have that, and then we do basically the same thing, but for Spider-Man, will they be the same color? What do you think? I am gonna let you figure that out. And so Spider-Man, they both, right now, we did new person that gave Peter Parker black hair. Will Spider-Man also have black hair? Well, we will figure this out and we'll change this to Spider-Man. And man can be uncapitalized. And we will run this. Let's see what happens. We're running. And here we are, hair color of Peter Parker, black, hair color of Spider-Man, also black. All right, so now we'll add this guy in there and make it all pretty formatted. Now, what if, what if I change Peter Parker's hair to pink? What would that mean? Well, I would do Peter Parker dot hair color equals pink. And again, it has to be this enum type. What happens then? Is Spider-Man's, like, did it just, there are two, like, ways this whole connection could, like, could work. Basically, one idea is that Peter Parker, you know, he's his own person, and he had black hair color first. And when we did this aliasing, then Spider-Man also had black hair, and it saved the fact that Peter Parker used to have black hair. So if we even change Peter Parker, it's gonna, Spider-Man's still gonna have black hair. That's one idea. Another idea is that when Spider-Man points to the same object as Peter Parker, since they're the same thing, they point to the same person object, if you will. And so if we change Peter Parker's hair color, Spider-Man's Peter, like Spider-Man's hair color is also going to be changed because of the same, you know, they're the same person. So if we change something on one, the other one should be changed as well because they're in fact pointing to the same person, they're the same, you know, soul. So what do you think happens? Well, let's run it. Boom, we have hair color of Peter Parker is pink, like we expected, but also Spider-Man's hair color is changed to pink. This is aliasing. It means when I set Peter Parker equal to Spider-Man, that means that they're gonna point to the same object in memory. And so when I change one, the other one would be changed. But what happens if I change Spider-Man's hair color to pink? Do you think the same thing would happen or would Peter Parker still have black hair? Let's run it and Noticeably, pink, Peter Parker also has pink hair and Spider-Man has pink hair. That's great because this is how it works in real life. If I'm Taylor Swift and, you know, Taylor Swift is, that's not her real name maybe, I don't know, and she has this alias T-Swizzle or whatever. If you change like the hair of Taylor Swift to, you know, red or something, she becomes a redhead, then T-Swizzle is also going to have red hair because it's in fact the same person. So it's good that this works like this in code, it's how we want it to work. But keep this in mind when you're trying to copy stuff or save variables, this can be something that kind of messes up your system if you're not aware of it. Now, let's think what happens when this function ends? What happens to these pointers and this memory? Well, if you remember from encapsulation from a while back, whatever is created within a set of curly braces only lives within that set of curly braces. And so anything that's created within this main function, it's only going to live here. Or anything that's created inside this person function, it only lives here. So if we had this int a equals five, like you wouldn't be able to access it out here. Here, like in our main function, when the main function ends, our Peter Parker and Spider-Man pointers and the person objects that they, you know, the person object they point to because it's the same object are no longer needed because there's no way to access them. Once this last curly bracket, you know, closes, you can't access, you know, this person object that was created unless it was saved up here and has a reference. And so basically this person object no longer has a reference. And so it can be deleted. We don't need it anymore. And so what happens to it? Does it just sit in memory? Well, no, we are lucky, we're using Java. Java is great, you know, and it has something called Java garbage collection. And basically this, you know, system, this Java garbage collection deallocates memory and reuses it for like another function or something else going in on like in your system. Here, our program is pretty, you know, small, it's chill, but when you get to make like larger programs, this matters and knowing about this, you know, deallocation is really important because otherwise we run out of memory and those things are bad. So try to keep it within, so try to keep like your, the stuff that takes up the most memory inside a very narrow set 
of curly brackets because you want to use the like least amount of memory that you can at a specific time. Now I know memory seems like this big black box where everything is stored, but don't worry, it's okay to think of it like that for now. Um, more memory stuff you know, can come later, but just understand that when objects can no longer be accessed, they are unreferenced, they don't have a pointer to them, then they are deleted by the garbage collector. Now where is this garbage collection? Well, it's part of something called the Java Virtual Machine. This is something that we've been using all along, but you just didn't know it. So what is the Java Virtual Machine? Well, it's this abstract computing machine that allows a computer to run Java programs. Makes sense, right? There are three big ideas that are kind of incorporated into this. It's pretty complicated, but these are the things that you should know. Specification, implementation, and instance. The specification says, okay, what is required, you know, for you to run your program? And so it has this like set of requirements saying your program must have this, 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 and it checks it with every program that comes in the system and allows it in the system if you know it meets the specifications. An implementation is a program that meets the specifications you know laid out inside of the specification, meaning that implementations are allowed to run on the Java virtual machine and have everything that you know a program that can run on it needs to have. An instance is an implementation in action. It's running on the system or on the computer, and the program is being compiled into Java bytecode and it runs its course, it does its things. And so there's actually a compiler that's built into the Java virtual machine, which is great. And there are a bunch of other details that are important and I'm gonna skip over them because yeah, we have other things to do. We're, we're very busy people. And so we're gonna skip over those. And so now well, that was a lot of me talking. I talked a lot, but these are important things you gotta know. You have to know pointers, aliases, enums, garbage collection in the Java virtual machine and how they all fit together because it's the key to getting a full understanding, you know, well-rounded of CS, even if it's a bit, you know, dull and boring, but it helps you make better programs, which is what you wanna do, right? But now on to more fun things. I showed you guys Stack Overflow and documentation, but I'm gonna show you again because it's like super important. NCS, you don't really need to know anything. You could come in day one and just be super smart and totally come in and not know anything about the language that your boss wants to wants you to program in and you would be fine. Like that's, those are the types of skills you should have. If you like, what is the language that isn't, you know, Rattlesnake, like Python's a language, but Rattlesnake isn't a language. Like if your boss comes and says, hey, I need you to program in Rattlesnake, you would be able to do that no fine if you are a good programmer. You shouldn't be defined or like closed off because of one language. And so what happens like, okay, program Rattlesnake? Well, you are gonna be able to do that because you know how to use documentation and Stack Overflow. And so what if we go to the internet and we go to Java documentation um, and we can literally find a bunch of stuff about Java and how things work and how classes work and look at all of this, these things right here. Enum, we just talked about enums. Here it is, it does things, and yeah, you can learn all about it. There's this constructor thing, how do you make new enums? How do you, like, if there's methods, how do you use them to string? How does it work? Stuff like this, cloning all this good stuff and it's inside of here in this documentation. So another example would be if your boss comes in and says, I need you to implement an array list that does this function. Well, you can be like, oh, I've never done array list, so I'm nervous and I don't know what I'm doing. Or you can be like, well, let me just talk, let me just talk to my documentation here. And so we can do this and I bet you array list, we have abstract list and it's in here. Array list, arrays, array list. And so here, we can see that generics, we will get to that in another video, but don't worry about this E thing. And we can see, okay, it's an array list, blah, blah, blah. And we can go down here, how do we make them? We just say new array list. Um, we can add like a collection of things if we already know what we want in our list, we can give it a capacity. And literally the description's right here. And so we can say, okay, what can we, what do array lists do? Well, you can add to them, you can clear everything out of them, you can get things, you can see if it's empty or not, you know, you can remove things. And so this, being able to go to the internet and find these things is extremely important. And again, if you have problems, Stack Overflow. I had a problem recently where my scanner didn't read the whole sentence. And the whole thing was that I had to do s.next a couple more times for it to get to the next line because 
when you do da, 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 s dot next int, it doesn't push it over to the next line. It literally only does the next int. But those are my problems. But you can come with your problems to Stack Overflow. And I'm going to sign up for an account at some point. Because then if you look at other people's code and can figure out the problems with their code, like you're A plus, you're great. That's the, those are the people that are really cool because everyone can write code, but not everyone can debug code, which is important to remember. And so, yeah, those, those are important things. And lastly, you know, I've been talking a lot, but you're gonna be so excited because I finally figured out how to change this template thing. I, you know, I did my research and now I know how to change it. So I'm very excited. I'm very excited to not have this stupid thing right here forever. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do it right here. We're going to change this template file. We're gonna go to tools and we're gonna go to templates. Here we are, we're in the templates. And we, we're gonna change two of the templates in here. The first template we're gonna change is inside of licenses. And we're gonna scroll down here and we are gonna go to default license and then we're gonna click open an editor. And here we are, look, it's the stupid annoying thing. And so you know what we're gonna do? We are going to delete this. And up here we are gonna write copyright 2015. And we are also going to delete this guy here and we're gonna call it Blondie Bites. We're gonna save it and we're gonna be good to go. And we can actually see what this does by doing person control, you know, click, and then do a new Java class, create the new class, and boom, we have my copy right here. But this takes up a lot of space, this author thing, and it's really annoying, so I wanna get rid of it. How do I do that? Well, we are just gonna delete this new class here because it's annoying and we don't need it. And da -da -da -da, there it is. Um, and then we'll go to tools, templates. Here we are. We are not going to go to licenses. We're going to go into bleh, we're going to Java, Java class, open an editor. This is where we have our author thing. And so this is what we are going to change. How are we going to change it? Well, we're just going to delete, you know, one of those guys and it will be great. And we're going to put a little space here so that we have some space between our class and you know who I am, the user. And that's it. So if we save, we do a new little thing here. Java class, da, 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 new class, sure. Here we are and it has my copyright and you know, I'm the author, so there it is. And this is awesome and we're done. So that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope your template now is better. Another way you can do this template thing is to like click a new class and you can do save as template. And when you do that, you put where you, and then you just have to set it later on to be the right, you know, match up to the right thing. But yeah, you know how to make your things prettier now, which you didn't know before. You learned about enums, you learned about pointers, you learned about Java virtual machine, garbage collection, all this great stuff. And there's one thing I'm forgetting, aliases, Spider-Man, Peter Parker, you did it all. You understand how things work. In computer science, we talked a lot about big abstract concepts. And next time we're gonna do a little bit more Cody things, which is great. And so that's it for this video. The Hacker Rank Challenge is down below in the description. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on this video. I hope you learned something and I will see you tomorrow.